Welcome back to the channel for 2022. 2021 was an amazing year, of course, for my YouTube. And I hope we can just continue the momentum of the last couple months. And I'm just very grateful for all your recent support. And hopefully you guys will continue to follow me on this great YouTube journey. I'm trying to hit 100k this year. Let's see if we can do it. But today I wanted to talk about more ridiculous discourse. And this time as it often does, it revolves around Israel, Palestine, and it revolves around Zionists getting very, very butthurt when a prominent person offers, I guess, very, very tepid support for Palestine. Now, in the past, we've covered, you know, like Gal Gadot, we've covered Seth Rogen, Natalie Portman, Mia Khalifa, all their comments on Israel and Palestine, and we might go back to them a bit later. But today what I want to talk about is Emma Watson, of course, Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter films, offering some support for Palestine. Prominent Israeli's response to that. Then I want to talk about JK Rowling and I want to talk about anti-Semitism in Harry Potter itself. Mainly focusing on the goblins and as luck would have it, Jon Stewart recently even called out JK Rowling, I think like last night or something, about this stuff. So we're going to talk about his comments, and finally we're going to round it off with the late Desmond Tutu, who of course, just like Nelson Mandela, was a big supporter of Palestine. And I want to talk about the complete hypocrisy of loads of people who support Zionism, lauding Desmond Tutu as this great figure, while not mentioning his very, very vocal support for Palestine and for BDS. So all of that coming up in a sec, and as part of my New Year's resolution, I am scrapping the little segment where I plug my social medias in favor of like me just talking about it because I feel like it shifts enough that I shouldn't really have a scripted thing. So thanks so much for the recent support on Patreon because my channel has been facing a lot of issues with demonetization over the last couple months. Now, it seems that I am in YouTube's good graces right now and I've had a lot of videos on this subject matter actually monetized. I am not going to risk it today and I'm going to myself demonetize the video to help increase my YouTube rating. For those of you who don't know, YouTube allows us to rate our own videos and say whether we think they should be monetized or not. Get too many wrong and YouTube aren't monetizing any of them. Now on the surface, that might seem quite easy to avoid, but if you watch my previous videos where I explain this more in depth, I had like maybe a two month streak of rating every single video accurately and then they just suddenly slapped me with this whole thing saying they don't trust me anymore. So if you want to support my work continuing, regardless of all this YouTube rubbish, then please consider becoming a patron. I'm trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible, and the benefits of that at the moment are getting access to the private patrons Discord and my Nintendo Switch friend code. I'm gonna make a big patron post before I go away to Spain, and I'm gonna also give out my PSN ID as well at some point. And if you just generally wanna support me or follow me, Come follow me at Instagram and Twitter at The Cavernacle. Also come join the subreddit and the Discord in the description. I live stream two times a week and that stuff is archived on The Cavernacle Extra. That is my second channel. And because someone recently said they don't like my videos only because I never remind people to, if you like the video, I will be eternally grateful. That really does help the video out in the algorithm. So please like the video if you do. And even if you dislike it, please just dislike it. Any engagement really helps the video. So now on to the video. Let's see what Emma Watson posted on Instagram that got Zionist knickers in such a twist. I bet it was the most radical thing I have ever heard in my life. So two days ago, Emma Watson reposts this picture with a caption. So solidarity is a verb. And there in the picture, you can see Lots of people holding up free Palestine flags and just general Palestine flags as well. And the caption says, Solidarity does not assume that our struggles are the same struggles. All that our pain is the same pain. All that our hope is for the same future. Solidarity involves commitment and work as well as the recognition that even if we do not have the same feelings or the same lives or the same bodies, we do live on common ground. Sarah Ahmed, repost at Bad Activist Collective. So a lot of Zionists got very, very mad at this. So here is Ambassador Danny Danon, who's a very prominent figure in Netanyahu's Likud party, 
10 points from Gryffindor for being an anti-Semite at Emma Watson. So we've reached the stage in the Israel-Palestine discourse where a very vague post with an image that has Palestinian flags and free Palestine makes you racist against Jewish people according to hard-right Zionists. And this is the culmination of the weaponization by the right of anti-Semitism against the left. We've seen this in the UK. It effectively destroyed Jeremy Corbyn's election campaign where everyone was calling him anti-Semitic for being opposed to Zionism. And of course, they've been doing it in the US with people like Ilhan Omar, AOC, Rashida Tlaib. They even tried it with Bernie Sanders, who is Jewish himself. A lot of his family were killed by the Nazis as well. People like Ben Shapiro were calling him a self-hating Jew and not a real Jew. And that's what Zionists always love to do, despite the fact that Orthodox Jews historically did not support the creation of Israel. Many still do not support Israel's existence as a nation state. But hey, apparently now to right-wing Israelis, just the mere mention of Palestine is inherently racist against Jewish people. So Mohammed El Kurd tweeting, the Israeli ambassador to the UN calls Emma Watson an anti-Semite for posting solidarity as a verb a week after Zionists smeared Desmond Tutu as anti-Jewish. How is this not satire? Mehdi Hassan saying former Israeli ambassador to the UN calls Emma Watson an anti-Semite. Beyond parody. Another Zionist, Emily Schrader, saying, so Emma Watson posts a message of solidarity with Palestine the day after Hamas terrorists fire rockets at civilians in Tel Aviv. Whether or not she understood what she was doing as a public figure, she has a responsibility to do better. And that's another thing right-wing Israelis often like to do is that if you support Palestine, you automatically support Hamas because they know a lot of people in Western countries, especially with our minds being melted by the war on terror, where we basically see all Muslims as the same and we think Hamas are the exact same thing as Al-Qaeda or the Taliban, that they can just say that like, yes, Hamas represents all Palestinians. Not to mention that Hamas only control Gaza and only took over Gaza after the election and their conflict with Fatah. But that's what these guys like to do to muddy the waters because there is nothing inherent about supporting Palestine that means you support Hamas at all. Saying you support Palestinians not getting their homes demolished or taken away from them by Israeli settlers has no connotations with Hamas. The fact that secular Palestinians and religious Palestinians have fought violent conflicts amongst themselves should show you that Palestinian politics is diverse in itself and having solidarity with Palestine does not in any way mean you support Hamas. So Blake Flayton, someone else, just in case you need an example of how disproportionate a hatred anti-Zionism is, Emma Watson just shared a Solidarity of Palestine post on Instagram, oh my God, where she has 64 million followers, four times the amount of Jews on planet Earth, but sure, their state is the problem. Liberalism, Zionism, and globalism, and someone saying, really good reminder that Emma Watson does not have nuclear capabilities nor billions of dollars of funding for an army, rocket launchers, and Iron Dome. Now the outrage at Emma Watson for this is of course totally overblown and also totally ridiculous. But what these guys are very sensitive about, and this is the point I wanna make, is that someone like Emma Watson is not some radical communist. She's not a radical leftist in really any way. She seems pretty progressive. I would say more progressive than a liberal. I wouldn't say from what I've seen, she is too radical, right? But why they hate someone like her sharing a solidarity with Palestine post no matter how tepid and vague, no matter how much it's really not saying anything, they hate it because they do not want more people like her to start standing in solidarity with Palestine. They rely on people like the Labour Party in the UK, Keir Starmer, people like that, the moderates. They rely on people like that saying like, BDS is racist and the conflict is too complicated. You cannot take a side. But if more people like Emma Watson start changing, then who's to say more people generally in British society at large don't start changing as well? And this is something I said I really appreciated that happened last year, is I feel like for the first time in my life, that solidarity with Palestine and opposition to Israel in general became very, very mainstream. I don't know if that was because like social media activism really took off after George Floyd or something like that, but I saw so many celebrities, even IGN put a Palestinian flag at the top of their website. That is totally unheard of. I can't even imagine that happening before, but it feels like a lot more people who might have been 
more liberal have been kind of like shaken awake when you see these awful videos. And while people might have told you before, it's too complicated. When you see first person videos filmed on iPhones of children huddling in apartments while they're being bombed by a hyper militarized nation that keeps them in an open air prison, then for a lot of people that is radicalizing the same way seeing the death of George Floyd was radicalizing to a lot of people in their views about the police. Now, Navarra Media had a really good article written by Rivka Brown, really touching on what I'm saying. So even if Emma Watson says free Palestine, we are winning. And the article says, here we come to the heart of the matter. Many celebrities have in fact expressed solidarity with the Palestinian cause. Admittedly, many of these expressions have been made during wartime when commenting feels more justifiable. And even then, many celebrities have retracted or worse, publicly regretted their support. Kendall Jenner, Paris Hilton and Rihanna have all deleted their pro-Palestinian posts. While Mark Ruffalo was forced to eat the same shit as, as Penelope, Cruz and co. Mark Ruffalo is pretty big on the Palestinian stuff and then... He retracted some of his comments. He said, I reflected and wanted to apologize for posts during the recent Israel Hamas fighting that suggested Israel is committing genocide. It's not accurate. It's inflammatory, disrespectful, and is being used to justify anti Semitism here and abroad. Now is the time to avoid hyperbole. I really, really reject what Mark Ruffalo said right there. I actually covered it on stream yesterday when someone calling themselves a progressive Zionist came on stream and started arguing with me that somehow Egypt treats Gaza worse than Israel. I don't even know how you can say this, like, Gaza is literally one of the worst fucking places to live in the entire fucking world. Most children have, like, PTSD from the constant war they're experiencing. It's one of the most densely populated areas in the world, one of the poorest areas in the world, massive unemployment. That's pretty much all because of Israel. You're telling me if Israel said, all right, Gaza, we're lifting all, all the blockade on you. Do you think Egypt would then be like, oh, fuck it, we've got, we got to bomb, we got to bomb the people in Gaza now because Israel aren't doing it? You're not a progressive Zionist. Someone for me who's a progressive Zionist is more like Natalie Portman or some shit. It's not like you who's pretty much saying Egypt, which is insane, has historically treated Gaza worse than Israel. That is just so not true and crazy. The article going on to say, what feels significant about Watson's post is not just that it was unprompted by any current events or that at the time of writing it remains published, it's that Watson has come to embody a particular brand of toothless progressivism that would normally run a mile from a Palestinian flag. For years, pro-Israel advocates have expended immense effort to make Palestine the most toxic of political causes to the extent that the very sight of Palestinian flags can invite charges of anti-Semitism. Then along comes the most squeaky clean of Hollywood starlets, waving one. Like it or not, celebrities have a measurable impact on our democracy. Watson's story has already changed turned up in the news cycle only to be revived with a vis you if she ever dares eat an Israeli hummus in public. Yet for me, the significance of Watson's post is not an instigator of social change, but a reflection on the rapidly expanding limits of acceptable public discourse on Palestine. In just the last year, multinational corporations and literary darlings have come out for Palestinian rights and unapologetically so. The reasons have been better explained elsewhere, but among them are clearly Black Lives Matter, which has insisted on the intersections between political causes, making it harder to be, as we say in Jewish circles, progressive except Palestine, as well as growing opposition from the diaspora and Israeli Jewry, which has made false accusations of anti-Semitism harder to maintain. Slowly but surely the tide is turning. So that echoes a lot of my sentiment in that it feels like it can now be publicly acceptable for a lot of celebrities to come out in support of Palestine because of Israel being controlled by such a far-right government for so long, so unapologetically brutal in its treatment of the Palestinians and still maintaining power despite fighting multiple wars, invading Gaza in 2014, obviously bombing Gaza in 2021, as well as pretty much like every year, but I'm talking about like significant build-ups of tension. As someone born and raised in England, but with an Irish background, it always like stuns me the difference between how we talk about Israel-Palestine in the UK compared to Ireland, because of course, Ireland as a former colonized nation, and of course still a currently colonized nation with the existence of Northern Ireland, Irish people know about settler colonialism. The Republic of Ireland as an independent state has historically given its political support 
to various anti-colonial movements across the Middle East, North Africa, across various parts of the world, being one of the first countries to often recognize their governments, and of course, standing in solidarity with the Palestinians, which has been a big thing for Irish people over the years. Now, because we're on the topic of Harry Potter, JK Rowling reflects the centrist in the UK and the liberal in the UK even, someone who talks about being tolerant, someone who talks about being educated. They don't wanna vote for the Tories, but they hate Jeremy Corbyn just as much. And of course they hate transgender people, and of course they call people like Jeremy Corbyn anti-Semites, but they had their own massive, massive blind spots. So a tweet I liked from Raf. So JK Rowling can write Jewish goblins with orthodox side locks as greedy owners of a bank covered with Jewish stars into Harry Potter and be considered an ally to Jews, but Emma Watson says she cares about Palestinians and is called an anti-Semite. So it's probably been pretty clear for a while that Harry Potter does have this problem of anti-Semitism, but JK Rowling has called out others for anti-Semitism, mainly Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party. So she's been in the news before talking about Israel, so JK Rowling explains refusal to join cultural boycott of Israel. Rowling was one of more than 150 signatories to a letter published in The Guardian last week. The letter was written in response to a February missive signed by around 700 artists calling for a cultural boycott of Israel. The letter signed by Rowling cites its signatories' belief that cultural boycotts singling out Israel are discriminatory and will not further peace and that cultural engagement builds bridges, nurtures freedom and positive movement for change. She has also used transgender people and Jeremy Corbyn as the villains in her more recent work, which is trash. And also I hope people start really assessing that Harry Potter books aren't actually that good beyond the world building. So in JK Rowling's new novel, a villain is an Israel hating anti-Semite. For months, author JK Rowling has been warning about the dangers of anti-Semitism in England, sparring on Twitter with critics who either downplay the phenomenon or say its proponents are confusing criticism of Israel with Jew hatred. Now in her newest book, she includes a character whose obsessive anti-Zionism morphs into anti-Semitism. Rowling's depiction of a far left anti-Semite comes at a time of record high anti-Semitism in Britain, where she lives. Britain's Labour Party and its leader, Jeremy Corbyn, have been accused of insensitivity to Jews and condoning anti-Jewish sentiments within the party's ranks. Now, it is pretty funny that JK Rowling is using Jeremy Corbyn as her villain and people in the Labour Party, and she's talking about how critics of Israel are anti-Semitic, but then she's worked on films based on her books where goblin bankers look like fascist caricatures of Jewish people and play into racist stereotypes about Jews controlling the global banking industry. And also, who could forget this classic tweet? My wife said there are no Jews at Hogwarts. I'm a Jew, so I assume she said it to be the only magical one in the family. Thoughts, J.K. Rowling saying, Anthony Goldstein, Ravenclaw, Jewish wizard. J.K. Rowling seems to like making the racial and ethnic minorities in Harry Potter have the most stereotypical names. So, Anthony Goldstein, Cho Chang for your only Asian character, Seamus Finnegan for your only Irish character. Despite the wonderful world she's made of Harry Potter, doesn't seem to have too much of an imagination when it comes to different races of humans. Let's circle back to the goblin thing, and I want to talk about Jon Stewart's comments that recently came out. Hopefully I can play you the clip, but I'm going to read you what he said anyway. People often say, JK Rowling didn't write the films, she didn't direct the films. Therefore, the goblins, clearly inspired by racist caricatures of Jewish bankers, are not her fault. I mean, she writes the Fantastic Beast films, she didn't write these ones. Okay, so you're JK Rowling, you have a creative input on these films. You visit the set, or you go see the film, you see these goblin characters. And you're trying to tell me someone who cares so much about anti-Semitism doesn't stop and say, I really have a problem with how those goblins look. Do you honestly think she didn't have the power, if she wanted to, to take that goblin depiction out of the film itself. It's problematic anyway that the goblins have this position in society, but their design makes it a hundred times worse. In the books they're described as a highly intelligent race of small magical humanoid beings with long fingers and feet that coexist with the wizarding world. They are adept metalsmiths, notable for their silver work, they even mint coins for wizarding currency. Due to their skills of money and finances, they control the wizarding economy to a large extent and run Gringotts Wizarding Bank. So already that seems to be 
playing into a lot of anti-Semitic tropes about a race of people running the global banking industry, and then you have their depiction in the actual film. Come on, are you seriously saying someone who's meant to be this tireless campaigner against anti-Semitism sticks people like Jeremy Corbyn as the villain in her work? There's no problem basing goblins on racist caricatures of Jewish people. So John Stewart also spoke about this stuff, and him and his co-host talk about how shocking it was even at the time, I'm going to read his comments. If I can play the clip, you're not going to hear me read them, but here it is for you. That's how you know Use it. like Jews are still where they are, talking to people. What I say is, have you ever seen a Harry Potter movie? And people are all like, I love the Harry Potter movies. Like, you ever see the scenes in Gringotts Bank? And they're like, I love the scenes in Gringotts Bank. He's like, do you know what those folks that run the bank are? And they're like, what? And they're like, Jews. And, and then that I remember. Person, and then that person says, no, goblins. <laughs> and then you go, and you're like, do you hear let, yourself? Let me show you this from, uh, it's the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. I just want to show you a caricature. And they're like, oh, look at that. That's from Harry Potter. And you're like, no, <laughs> yeah. that's a caricature of a Jew from an anti-Semitic piece of literature. J.K. Rowling was like, can we get these guys to run our bank? And you're like, this is, it's, it's a wizarding world. It's a world where it's <laughs> you like. You can imagine anything. The train station has a half a thing and no one can see it. And we can ride dragons and you've got a pet owl. And who, who runs the bank? Who should run the bank? Uh, Jews. <laughs> Not like, only that, no, it's... I feel like she was like, why'd you make it so subtle? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's re like, yeah, they look like Jews. What if the teeth were sharper? And you're like, oh, okay. I truly, yeah. I was like 11 or 12 yeah. and was like, all like, I love Harry Potter. And I remember like being in the theater and being like, this is kind of fucked up. <laughs> that's, that's exactly. It might have been the first time I said the F word. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. 11 year old Henrik does not swear. I was like, ooh. That, that was a, one of those things where good. you you expect, it reminded me of those horror movies where like everybody's been taken over by the thing, but you haven't. So you're looking around and every time someone sees you, they go, ah. <laughs> It was one of those things where I saw it on the screen and I was expecting the crowd to be like, holy shit, she did not yeah. in a wizarding world just throw Jews in there <laughs> to run the underground bank. And everybody was just like, wizards. That's crazy. It was so weird. Even Dobby was like, that's fucked up. Those yeah. are Jews. <laughs> Dobby's like, Dobby, Dobby doesn't have anything oh against my Jews. Lord. Oh, Dobby wow, doesn't wow, wow. understand. So a lot of people can often convince themselves by supporting Israel they are in no way anti-Semitic because how can you be anti-Semitic? You support the Jewish state of Israel. But we see that a lot with far-right types from Tommy Robinson to basically the whole evangelical side of the Republican Party where their whole support for Israel is based on them triggering biblical Armageddon where all the Jews will die. But that's not anti-Semitic. Ilhan Omar actually is because she opposes Israel. This also extends to people not acknowledging revered figures activism for Palestinian rights. Now I made a video about why I don't like David Pakman and he basically did this gross segment about Black Lives Matter who said that the liberation of Palestine is a goal of Black Lives Matter as well. And he listed off a bunch of black activists saying that they supported Israel. Bizarrely, he put Malcolm X in there who definitely did not support Israel. Even Malcolm X declared the year before he was assassinated that Pan-Africanism will do for the people of African descent all over the world the same that Zionism has done for the Jews all over the world. So to pretend that there is this natural connection between Black Lives Matter and anti-Israeli movements like BDS that have cropped up uh, is absolutely ridiculous. But the liberation of black people worldwide has been synonymous with the anti-colonial struggle of the Palestinians. And that is exemplified by Nelson Mandela and of course the late Desmond Tutu. But recently, some of the biggest Zionists in the UK, the leaders of the two political parties, both saying how much Desmond Tutu was a great guy. Failed to mention that he was a strong supporter of BDS and the Palestinian cause. Also recently, both of these leaders have overseen their parties cracking down on BDS and pro-Palestinian campaigns. So Keir Starmer, better known as Keith Stalin, tweeted, Desmond Tutu was a tower of a man and a leader of moral activism. He dedicated his life to tackling injustice and standing up for the oppressed. His impact on the world 
crosses borders and echoes through generations. May he rest in peace. Now, recently in November, Keir Starmer slammed the Labour Friends of Israel speech against BDS. Starmer took to the stage at an annual lunch organised by the lobby group, which supports strong bilateral relations between the UK and Israel, saying anti-Zionist anti-Semitism denies Jewish people a right to self-determination. The Labour leader said his party does not support the BDS movement, which works to end international support for Israel's oppression of Palestinians. The Labour Party does not and will not support BDS. It would cause huge damage to the relationship between Israel and the United Kingdom. So Jordanian-Palestinian student Monjed Al-Tarifi told the new Arab by message, Starmer repeats the notion that links anti-Zionism to anti-Semitism. Does Starmer realise the difference between a political ideology and a religion and ethnicity? Failing to distinguish between both just shows a desire to silence opposing views. I would also argue that lumping them in together is inherently anti-Semitic as well. But then you have Boris Johnson saying, I am deeply saddened to hear about the death of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He was a critical figure in the fight against apartheid and in the struggle to create a new South Africa and will be remembered for his spiritual leadership and an irrepressible good humour. And what are his Conservative Party going to do next year? UK to outlaw BDS in the following months, Conservative MP says. British MP and member of the government Robert Jenrick has announced on Tuesday that the British government will pass legislation to outlaw BDS. During a conversation titled why do so many people hate Jews? Moderated by former Labour MP Joan Ryan and featuring Likud, MK, Avi Dicta, Jemrick stated in the following months we'll be working to outlaw BDS. I do think BDS is being beaten back here. There is no political party in the UK that would support BDS today. But just like with Liberals in the Labour Party, The Guardian, in their obituary for Desmond Tutu, also didn't mention he was a very strong supporter of BDS and the Palestinian rights movement. So the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign wrote here, All of those committed to the struggle for justice and peace in the world are mourning the death of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He was a giant in the struggle against South African apartheid and against all forms of racial injustice. For Palestinians, his support for their struggle for justice rendered him an iconic figure. The Guardian's obituary failed to make any mention of his repeated criticisms of Israeli policies and his commitment to the cause of Palestinian liberation. However, the concern about this omission was made more serious by the deletion of a large number of comments in response to the obituary, which highlighted Tutu's condemnation of Israeli apartheid on the grounds that such comments violate the Guardian's community standards. Now, let's talk to you how it's kind of ridiculous to even omit this stuff from Desmond Tutu. Palestinian BDS National Committee wrote... Desmond Tutu's early endorsement of BDS months after the movement was launched in 2005 by the largest coalition in Palestinian society and his unique contribution, public and private, to BDS campaigns gave the movement a massive moral boost and convinced many other influential figures worldwide to follow suit. He once quipped to a BDS activist, you are going much faster than us in seeking your own full menu of rights. It must be the internet, but your struggle will be harder than ours as Israel's apartheid is even worse than South Africa's. We never had F-16s bomb our Bantu stands, killing hundreds of our children, remember that. But I think this whole thing with Desmond Tutu just shows you what these people like to do. They like to erase the pro Palestinian activism of people who advocate for the rights in other countries. Now, the whole BDS movement is literally modelled after the boycott of South Africa that happened leading up to the end of apartheid, of course, the UK. And the US did not support that either, called Nelson Mandela a terrorist, backed the apartheid forces while they were fighting the communist Cubans, East Germans, and African communist groups in Angola. But like people like David Pakman, they like to pretend these causes are not linked. Anti-colonialism is linked between South Africa and Israel, between Ireland and and Israel-Palestine. It's always been linked to say that's basically to black people, but there's no link for Black Lives Matter to make between Palestine and their own struggles. It's always, always been there. And like the David Patman thing still gets me riled up because it's so ridiculous that he even listed Malcolm X, someone who was in the nation of Islam, someone who was a massive anti-colonialist, met all these people struggling for African rights or against colonialism, like, you know, Fidel Castro, leaders of Algeria and various other African countries. To say that he would somehow support Israeli colonialism, but that's what people don't want you to think about because Desmond Tutu, Nelson Mandela, they're very revered figures. Even liberals love them because they sanitise them. Like they sanitise Martin Luther King, they did it with Nelson Mandela, and they're doing it with Desmond Tutu before he was even put in the ground. 
because they don't want to normalise in society, especially in Western British and American society, that the world heroes do actually support Palestinian liberation and are anti-Zionist. And it's how you effectively destroy someone's legacy. I made a whole video talking about Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela is if you can't destroy them because they're too famous or their message has spread too much, you change what they were. So you make it more sanitized and simple. Nelson Mandela just didn't like racism. Martin Luther King just didn't like racism. And they fought to end racism. Whereas they were massive anti-capitalists who were also for the liberation of all colonized people. But I'll end it by saying people like Emma Watson writing their support for Palestine on Instagram and things like that. It might seem pretty tepid, like I've been saying. Like, Navarra Media said as well. But it shows the conversation is changing, especially in a place like the UK, where the two major political parties are against the boycott movement of Israel, are both pro-Zionist, are both institutionally racist against black people and against Arabs and Muslims. And people love Harry Potter, they love Emma Watson, so hopefully it will start to change the younger generation's mind. And that's what I appreciate about Gen Z on these issues, in that it seems like the morality in some ways is more black and white because yes, what Israel are doing is completely insane and unconscionable and disgusting. And we don't even need to get into the complexities of what's a solution, like two state, one state or anything like that. It's just, you're keeping these people locked up. You're depriving them of the basic necessities most people enjoy. You're traumatizing their children by killing their brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, and bombing their homes while settlers in other parts of Palestine are taking people's homes, families who've lived there for decades and decades, sometimes tracing back to like centuries and centuries. And you're having some random rich guy from New York come and take their home from them. It's sick and with social media, you're seeing more firsthand accounts of this stuff and hopefully, if Emma Watson and people like that and other celebrities are anything to go by, more people are waking up to the reality and are being less brainwashed by the news media and the mainstream political parties. Anyway, that is it. That is the first video of 2022 all done. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments about Harry Potter, the goblins, Emma Watson, all these things. If you want to follow me on social media at the Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to join our communities, check out the Discord and the subreddit. If you want to support me on Patreon, check out my Patreon as well. Please like the video. And if you made it this far, thank you all for watching.